Hello and welcome to this video where we're going to be talking about the progress of my house and what I dream to achieve in 2024. I cannot believe <laughs> that it has been over three years. We're moving into the fourth year of me living in this house. I moved into this house at the very end of 2020 and so my renovations and the whole journey of this house started fresh and clean January 2021. And I sat here and I told you all about it and I went on a whole house tour and I basically was like here's where we're starting and here's where we're going. And then a year later, 2022, I told you what had we accomplished in a year of renovations. And then again in 2022, I told you what I had accomplished at the end of the second year of renovations. So here I am at the end of the third year of renovations to talk about where we're at. And it's very interesting. It's very different from the other updates because last year was not very productive, if I'm being honest. What's important to note, and I actually really think this is important to note, is that 2023 was one of the happiest years of my life. Isn't that wonderful? <laughs> I had had quite a few very difficult years for lots of different personal reasons, and I know basically <laughs> everyone did for a few years there. 2023 finally kind of felt like turning over a new leaf. And obviously turning over the new leaf probably was when I moved here um, three years ago, but it didn't feel that way until 2023. I think 2023 is when my brain finally clicked into place and was like, you live here. You're not gonna move again. You can feel stable here. You've started to make some friendships here. You've started to get favorite places Places and have visitors to your home and it just started to feel like I'm living here not like I've just moved here but I didn't get a lot done with the house we're gonna do an updated house tour where I'm gonna show you the things that did get done but I did want to say that I think that's just life. 2021, 2022, they felt like work years to me. I was trying to make sure that I was making enough money to pay for the house and buy the new roof and do all these things and land back on my feet and figure it all out. Whereas 2023 felt like I was trying to just lean in a little bit and have some more fun, take the gas off the pedal for a bit and coast. And that happened. But while I'm glad it happened, I'm very excited for the pendulum to swing the other way. I am feeling this like real drive, which I cannot emphasize enough. I did not feel in 2023 <laughs> and I was severely lacking at the end of 22 even. I was just feeling so tired and exhausted and just like I needed a break. And I think I got that break. I think I got that break, which means that I now feel very ready and very prepared and willing and excited to get a lot of stuff done. So let's start with the tour and then we're gonna shift into talking about the goals I have for 2024. Before we continue, it's time to thank today's sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is the largest online learning community for creatives with thousands of classes led by industry pros across film, illustration, design, freelance, productivity, and more. Skillshare now has learning paths. These are hand-picked courses that work together to really strengthen a new skill you might want to learn. So for example, maybe you have a bit of a house design goal. Well, they have this learning path called Craft Your Space, Design the Perfect Room with DIY Decor, which leads you through four different classes that you can take to learn new skills. This is a beginner level path, but they go all the way up to advanced, and it's a great way to let their curation help guide you down a rabbit hole to learn a new skill. If you want to check out Skillshare, the first 500 people that use my link down in the description will get one month free. So check it out down below and thank you so much to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Let's start with the things that you cannot see but were very important to the house this year. First of all, I got all of the upstairs electrical rewired to modern standards, which is very exciting. And I do hope to do the downstairs this year, but in the budget, was not possible. <laughs> so for the budget, woohoo! All of upstairs is completely rewired and we have new uh, outlets. 
everywhere. In, that, in this house, there used to only be one outlet per room upstairs, and it was a two-pronged outlet instead of a three-pronged outlet, because nothing was grounded, because it was the original electrical. So now upstairs is super safe, and we can move on to downstairs. The second big thing was the hot water tank died and was revived. <laughs> so we had these massive floods here in Nova Scotia um, a couple of months ago. And I mean, now it was like almost half a year ago, but it was, they were devastating. They were really, really bad. And my cellar got totally flooded and it ruined the hot water tank. And it meant that we were having like really short showers. Like the hot water would only last like seven minutes or something. And then eventually it just fully died. And I had a plumber come over, he looked at it and he was able to fix it. So that was awesome and another victory. And then the third thing was that I got my driveway re-graveled. This was my birthday present from my parents, which was so great because they were like, what would, what would actually help you? Like, what if we re-graveled the driveway? And I was like, I'm in love with that idea. <laughs> That's an awesome idea. And we're not talking about paving it. We're not talking about anything like fancy. A guy just came and dumped gravel on it and then we rolled it. My dad actually like rolled it out and flattened it and everything. But it's awesome and it's so much better than it was before and it was like a great life improvement. So those are some of the structural things. But now let's talk about the fun stuff. In this room, the new shell. They are beautiful and extremely functional. What's funny is in this video that I did last year, you can actually see the books piled up behind me. Like they were growing and multiplying and now they have a place to go. There is no books on the ground right now. And that's huge. <laughs> and I'd been meaning to do this. I'd been meaning to finish this project for a long time and I, I'm obsessed with how it looks. It's beautiful. If you watch that video, wait, where did I put them? Oh, here they are. If you watch that video, I had a problem where I ran out of uh, bookends. I got some new ones. I bought a bunch of these black ones and I think they look so good because they go with the brackets. So just solving problems all over the place. Next up is this very odd little view because I don't know how else to frame the kitchen <laughs> to show you the carpet removal. This is huge because in 2023, I finished removing carpets from this house. If you've been here for a long time, you know that this house had every color of carpet that they sold in the 1970s. <laughs> Lime green, bright yellow, orange, brown, faux tile. If they made a carpet, this house had it. And in surprising places, the upstairs bathroom had it originally and this kitchen was fully wall to wall carpeted. And now it is not. This is by no means the finished floor. This is basically subfloor. Um, but for now it's clean. It's got a fresh coat of paint on it. Eventually I'll be putting new flooring on top of it and making it really beautiful, but at least we're not on carpet. <laughs> And here I am at another strange angle, partly because if you can have dug in the frame, you should have dug in the frame. Um, but no, I wanted to show you that this room also got some big serious floor changes because this was also carpeted. This is the nicest floor I've found in the whole house. This is like actual beautiful floor that I don't understand why they covered in a brown carpet, but um, yeah. I restored this floor, not perfectly, but again, so nice for now, because this living room is going to be next year's project. I'll tell you that right now. Um, but here you can also see that we put down new flooring in the bathroom. And again, this is temporary flooring. And I believe that they don't even recommend you use this particular type of flooring that I did for bathrooms, because if it gets wet, um, it can, it can get destroyed over time. But this bathroom, if my plan goes correctly, <laughs> this bathroom will not exist in a couple of years because I'm going to be moving it to a different part of downstairs, farther back, farther back. And so that won't, I don't need it to last a long time, but for about 200 bucks, this is so much better than the tarpaulin I had here before. <laughs> so huge improvement, Doug approves.
Do you approve? Oh, he's so restful right now. Oh, he's a perfect dog. Wow. Let's go upstairs. All right, here we are upstairs in my bedroom where we tiled this little project, but let me, let me tell you. <laughs> This little project made a really big difference in this room, I think. It knocks it and elevates it into the next level. Having this little feature just makes the room feel so much more purposeful and designed and thoughtful. Um, I'm obsessed with this project. It's one of my favorite projects I've done in the house. It's really, again, it was small in scale and in scope, but I just think it's one of those things where it was like, yeah, it was kind of a small project, but the impact is really big. Like you walk into this room and you're like, what is this custom tile? <laughs> What's going on? And in collaboration with the wallpaper, and I'm really happy with like the furnishings and the linen linens in here. I just think this room is so pretty. I love this room. But that brings us to the end of the accomplished list. That's kind of the tour of everything new that happened in the house. Not much, you know? Like, as I said, not much. So now I want to transition over to doing something that I hadn't done in the other videos because I pretty clearly know what I want to accomplish this year. In 2024, I want to feel some really solid progression forward. And so I was thinking, a lot of brainstorming was happening and I was thinking, what could I accomplish in the house that would feel like really big progress, but I actually think is super doable and would be moving the needle forward in a way that I'm proud of and is challenging, but is not stressful and overwhelming. <laughs> and I was thinking, what do I have left? What do I have left? And I have decided. I have two resolutions, house-related goals for the year. The first one is to finish upstairs. And the second one is to finish the front face of my house. Let's go outside to talk about the front face because that just seems fun. Okay, I wanted to film in front of the house because I'm talking about the outside of the house, but the river is raging and I feel like that's way cooler. <laughs> okay, the river is really loud. So I'm gonna hold the mic up really close to my mouth, but you can see the very edge of my house in the shot. This is the river that rages behind me. If you're the kind of person who like turns on water sounds or like white noise sounds or waterfall sounds to try and fall asleep, boy, do you wish you lived in my place. <laughs> it's all you can hear. <laughs> Anyways, so I have not prioritized the outside of my house as much as I thought I would. And that's for a lot of reasons. Number one, there was one huge thing I had to do, fix the roof. And I did that last year, well, like in 2022. And after that, I kind of deprioritized everything else. The second reason, and I've talked about this in videos before, but it's fascinating to me how the videos really do giantly impact the way I've been renovating the house. And I don't wanna show the outside of my house or my area at all. And so I haven't done anything outside. The third reason is that it's not as fun, like, renovating an interior room that I'm going to be walking in and out of all of the time feels more impactful to me and is just like exciting. So I deprioritized the outside, but no more. I realized if I don't spread it out a little bit, it's just not going to get done. And so I really need to put it on the list every year to check something off. And I realized it would be fun if every year, and I say fun, if it's not actually fun, but it would be fun if every year I basically say like, I'm gonna do the front face of my house, I'm gonna do the side of my house, I'm gonna do the back of my house, I'm gonna do the other side of my house, because that way in four years, it will all be done. And I spread over the cost because I kept thinking like, God, what year am I gonna paint this entire house? It's so big. I wanna do the front face of my house this year. This is a goal of mine and I probably will not document any of it because it's just kind of personal info but I want to paint the front of the house I think and I there's a rotted sill I need to hire someone to fix it my little porch is kind of falling off so I need to repair that um, so it's going to be like a lot of great 
growth for me and I also like really I'm excited to see the front of the house being proud and pretty on the street but I don't I don't think I'm gonna share it but it's a goal it's a big house goal and this is a house channel right now so now you know let's go back inside to talk about my second goal though the bigger goal like I said to finish the upstairs this is what the channel is gonna be about this year finishing the upstairs of my house and all that that entails. Welcome to the upstairs of my house. So you've seen this hallway in different videos and it's funny because this hallway has gotten done in pieces. One video we did the handrail because I was doing the downstairs handrail, but it had to come up. So we naturally did this and I filmed all of it for a video for when I finished up here and another video was doing this board and bat and wall and another video was doing the section behind you, which is my favorite project I've probably done, which is the built-in reading section, like the little nook. So things have gotten done here, but it's not done. You can see the ceiling <laughs> is falling apart. I need to rip down these things. There's a hole over there. There's all sorts of problems. So I feel like this is sort of symbolic of the upstairs because from my vantage point right now, I can see five doors. This one, that one, that one, and then there's two bedroom doors over there. That room is done. That's my bedroom. This room is done. This is the guest room, but this door leads to nothing good. <laughs> that door leads to nothing good. And so does that one. So basically this year, I want to completely finish the upstairs of the house. And this is where my official floor plan comes in because I just thought it would be cute. So this is what we're dealing with right now. And we have that room done and that room done, but all these other zones are in different stages of done. Let's start with the bathroom. The best discovery of the year was that there is a giant secret area behind my sink. You can't write that stuff. <laughs> I'm so excited about it. And this bathroom, there's all sorts of things going on. I have a plumber. I know a plumber now. I have plans for upstairs for how to finish this roof off. I, I'm in the midst of the plans, okay? So you're gonna be seeing a video about this really soon, hopefully in the next few weeks, the, and it's going to be gutting the bathroom because now that I destroyed this, I need to rip out these guys. I need to remove the sink. I need to remove the tub. There's all sorts of things I need to do before we can, like we got to rip it down so that we can build it back up. Um, I'm so excited. <laughs> this is going to be huge. If I can shower upstairs, are you kidding me? That's what dreams are made of. Okay. <laughs> and now here we are at the door to the spooky room. This, I, <laughs> I just realized one day that I just have to do it. Like when is going to be the perfect time to do this, to do the spooky room? I'm not sure, but how about right now? <laughs> right now. So let's go in there. Okay. It's called the spooky room for a reason. It's really spooky. <laughs> it's horrifying. Okay, here I am in the spooky room. There's some massive spider webs up there. So I don't know what to do with this light. Do I shine it? Do I not use it? I'm not sure. It's d dark because there's no lighting. There's no electricity. <laughs> there's no electricity. There's barely any floor. There are no walls. There's no insulation. There's nothing. We have nothing here, but Let's be honest, this is probably going to be, in the end, the coolest room in the house. <laughs> this is going to be the master bedroom. And when I say that I am so excited about it, I mean, I know I'm excited about everything, but I am, I really am. It's gonna be incredible. It's just going to be incredible. If you want a tour of what this room actually looks like, I it was one of the first videos I posted, I think. Um, and I have another follow-up video where me and my mom really cleaned this room up. Um, and now it's time to do the next steps, which is removing like all these weird walls around here and then building up the floor and then insulating the walls and then getting the electrical. There's so much to do that it's gonna be incredible.
And now we exit. Yes, it has become a bit of a storing ground. <laughs> So there you have it. That's the upstairs of the house and the projects we are tackling this year. The final room, of course, is this room. And you're thinking, how mysterious. <laughs> what the hell's going on in there? It is a bedroom the exact same shape as my bedroom, but it's my parents' room. They're currently in the midst of a giant renovation of their own home. And I believe that they were gonna move out this year and so I'd be able to renovate this room as well. But it's their room, so I'm not gonna go in there and show you their stuff. And if they don't move out by the end of the year, that's fine. I'll fill it in with another project because there's loads to do in the house. And I have other projects I really wanna finish this year that are a bit smaller. Like I wanna do the new flooring in the hallway downstairs and I want to finish this one little corner in the dining room where we had to cut a giant hole in the wall to install the new electrical panel. And I wanna put like a cool cover over that and stuff. So there's other little projects I'll be doing this year in the house, but the upstairs is the main thing I want to do. Hello, it's Ariel in editing land. I realized that for all of the things I said I want to do upstairs, I forgot to mention two very important projects, which are structural. When I say finish upstairs, I mean all the cosmetic stuff in all of the rooms, but I also mean some of the structural stuff, which in the upstairs is insulating the attic, which is not insulated at all. <laughs> and fixing the windows. So every room upstairs has a window and they are not double paned. And the single panes that are there are hardly holding on. They are all in dire need of restoration. So if I restore the windows and I insulate the attic, it will mean that not only is the upstairs beautiful and usable, but it's also fully sealed and the windows are great and the heat is being kept. So those are important goals for the year as well. You might be wondering, what about the kitchen? Because this, it's the elephant in the room, right? I started it sort of last year and then never followed up. I've decided it's just too difficult to do it with so many people living in the house. When my parents move out and they have their own kitchen and we can go over there and use their kitchen, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, it's just going to be so much easier. And so why not just wait? I don't need it right now. It's functioning fine enough. Now that the carpet's gone, it's not disgusting in there anymore. And so I'm just gonna prioritize the bathroom up here, which will be, don't worry, loads of work. <laughs> so there we have it. That is what got accomplished in 2023 and what I'm planning to do in 2024. It's a lot of work, but I cannot emphasize enough how excited I am to do it all. I feel really revved up and I feel really rested in a deep, psychological way <laughs> where I'm like, I feel like I got a year off sort of from the house a little bit. And am now I have all this enthusiasm and energy to give it my all for another year and see where we get. So if you'll bear with me for one more minute, I have a couple of plugs I'd like to do. If you're interested in following this journey along for the year, hit subscribe and you can see when I post new updates about all the projects I'm doing here. If you want to go a little step further and you're like, you know what, I wanna help her. <laughs> I wanna buy a can of paint for her. I wanna help her get some tiles for the bathroom. Um, <laughs> please consider becoming a patron. It's the best way to support my channel and it means a lot because it's a consistent amount of support that I get there, which is just so helpful. And finally, thank you of course to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. So there you have it. I really feel like this video is like the champagne pop <laughs> of the beginning of the year. Look back, celebrate what we got done, even if in this year's case, it wasn't that much, but look ahead, dream big, massive ambitions. <laughs> Gonna try my best. So we're off to, we're off to the races. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in my next one. Bye.